point. Okay. So yeah. when you sent me the thing and it was like, well, third to twenty nine, and we're sort of sharing. Um, I was a little bit confused, but the way you've just explained it, how it's tiered and how we're in a we're in a group sort of thing. Okay. That that's cool. And I'm glad to hear we made it through <laughs> around. Yes. Like, so. That's awesome. Hello everybody! We have gathered here for a little bit of uh, follow-up, afterglow, what have you, of the Estonian uh, speculative fiction uh, short story contest in which one of our co-op become Estonian adaptation stories took part and we made it to the second round! Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, and here we are. So, uh, I I was actually in the thing where they announced the things, so, and and I, I I think I understand the how the actual voting systems and contests worked better. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> ask me to explain anything if you if you feel mm -hmm. the need. I think I think I get it. I think the way they distribute points mm. and how certain things uh, in certain groups. I think that's a, f a good and fair way of doing things. Mm. Um, yeah. So basically... I'm, I'm yep. a big fan of the preferential voting system <laughs> uh -huh. though. Uh, in the UK we use first past the post and it is not representative at all but that is a story for another time. <laughs> um, yeah, so this, yes. this, we, we do not concern ourselves with that. No. <laughs> yes. So... Yeah. So well, let's, did, uh, I think we did quite well for our first competition, man. Yeah, uh, so a little bit more on that later, but uh, I remember my personal sort of hopeful goal was like, maybe, maybe, maybe we can get into the 20? <laughs> 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 but, but yeah, uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to flash back and remember how that the decision came to send in the story. Because, I mean, in the writing corner videos up until now, we have only referred to it as the Saturday, and, <laughs> and, and because the the voting was well, the voting wasn't still on, but the, the uh, results weren't uh, announced, so I didn't want to blabber too much about uh, uh, what I speculate or what I know, or, or like just just in case. So during the voting phase. Uh, the stories and author data were separated, so the people reading the stuff uh, didn't actually know whose story belongs to whom. And uh, once they once they had made the first selection, and then between the second rounders they did the preferential thing, and only after they had settled uh, the uh, the top ten. Uh, only then uh, were they given the names and all that. So it was. It, so that that part that part was very hush hush, and that's mm -hmm. that's that's why everybody was uh, speaking in vague terms and uh, and uh, no uh, no specific info and all that. But well, yeah. we're allowed to say scribe and the doctor again now. Yes. Uh, mm. So yeah, I remember that. But the deadline was at the end of March. I don't remember when the contest was uh, announced. I think it was like December, maybe, or January or something. A, f a few months earlier. Mm. And at the time, I was already working on the base camp story, uh, and I was already sort of rounding up the homework, pre-work for the story that I need to finalize now uh, for a local uh, shared universe uh, collection. So initially I was like, okay, yeah, contest, nice, do I have something ready for it? Uh, no, so yeah, maybe let's, let's, let's let it pass. But then uh, some of the judges started encouraging people and, and of course other authors encourage each other, each other like, because uh, mm -hmm. Let's say even if you have, if you have a contest with let's say uh, forty stories that are very strong overall, you still have a contest with forty stories. But if you have a contest with almost eighty stories, 
with all sorts of uh, levels and, and, and skills, then that's a bigger event. So it's like uh, in the name of having a bigger event, uh, many people were encouraged, like, yeah, even, even if you have something in your drawer, bring it out, whip it up, uh, put a, a tack a moustache on it and, and send it away. <laughs> Is that uh, how many entrants there were? About eighty. Uh, seventy-nine entries. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Mhm. 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 Oh, that means if there were seventy-nine entries, that means the second round, and if if the second round uh, runner-ups were twenty-nine, whoa, that means over fifty stories. There were still over fifty stories. That were still in the in the pool. Wow! I never thought of it like that. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, it, it was a big event. <laughs> mm. uh, anywho, I remember thinking that mm, should I take one of the Smith stories and start working it up, and I'm like, no, I, I don't, I don't really have the brain juice to uh, to work a story from ground up, and then I was like. Wait a minute. I already had the plan to uh, uh, to whoop up uh, uh, Scribe and the Doctor for Reactor anyway. I think uh, we talked about it like maybe November, December. Mm. I don't remember when, but uh, but but the the plan was sort of in motion. So I said, hmm, if I take it and I clean it up and I take the English draft and I turn it into a semi-clean Estonian text. Anyway, I might as well uh, show it to, to the judges before <laughs> before <laughs> going to Reactor. <laughs> and uh, that's that's what I did. But uh, and this this also becomes late becomes important later, and I think it factors in uh, in the results. Is that I didn't actually spend a ton of time with it now. So I I used what we have. Mm -hmm. I used the. Uh, I can't say that there wasn't any preparation because we we had worked on it quite a bit. But uh, when I worked out the Estonian text text based on the English uh, uh, draft, uh, I didn't add much. So it's like I uh, I think I maybe adjusted some 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 plot things, but uh, for example. Uh, some some from the from the writers workshop who are judges in a different contest uh, one day they brought up how so many stories lack a proper ending and, imi and immediately like fuck uh, ours doesn't doesn't quite have a proper ending or it's more like the mm. the uh, the, uh, the the point of the story or like the, the 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 bigger conflict is actually outside the bounds of this story yeah and I was like. Mm. Should I uh, should I start bringing in the whole you know the juicy and then I was like ah uh, no uh, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna clean up the the one we have I'm gonna mm -hmm. you know uh, wash it and comb it and uh, and change the diapers uh, but uh, for any additional stuff I think uh, it's better if we if we take it under uh, into proper workflow together because mm -hmm. because this will have implications for the upcoming stories so anything that can connect to other stories and can influence the universe stuff on the whole uh, I figured that it's it's better if I don't start meddling on the 11th hour so it's like <laughs> <laughs> so it's like better better clean it up the way it is <laughs> mm. and uh, yeah uh, I, I think I mentioned this in nearly every video we bring this up, but the idea to turn what the notes into Estonian, and then, um, then in the future we're going to come back and transfer Scribe and the Doctor back from English or adapt it rather from Estonian into English. Mm -hmm. um, and I, uh, regardless of anything else that's happened in the past <laughs> few months on this. Um, I th I like this work method. I think mm -hmm. this is cool. I think um, it's I don't a, know. it's a good filter. I would say. Mm. And there's I don't want to speak. I don't want to put words in your mouth. But there's probably some benefit 
to working in your natural language? Uh, in in this case, uh, I'm not sure. So uh, yeah, okay. I, I, I mean, uh, it uh, uh, certain uh, certain thought processes work, work differently, maybe. But uh, mm. because I was working off the English notes. Uh, in a way, oh, it, yeah. it, it was an extra stumbling block because, and, and there is also the matter of vocabulary. There are certain certain sci-fi staples that come or that are sort of really easy in English, like data pad and suit and what what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, and certain things don't have good non-clunky. Uh, words in Estonian, or at least don't have yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, there were certain bits. Uh, I think I think I've said something similar before when I worked on Sika. Is that certain very complicated matters are much easier to transfer into a different language, but then you have those. Uh, innocuous everyday scenery like sl your little daily life tidbits and like fuck we don't have a good word for this and <laughs> and if i and if i do use the existing words for this or existing uh, uh, expressions then it's going to it's going to sound way more weighty than it is uh, mm -hmm. an example from Sika is that uh, when uh, when the old dude comes to the bar to talk to Jewel the first time. And in English yeah. there is like a brief glance and you and you note the the parameters of his uh, his looks like uh, such and such skin, such and such nose, uh, such and such pose, etc. So mm -hmm. it's very brief. When I put the same thing in Estonian uh Carrying over the same information as is resulted in a clunky free sentence chunk mm. that made the uh, editor ask, uh, "Is this guy important? Why is it? Why is he getting such a thorough uh, yeah, description?" This, yeah, and meanwhile, in uh, in the original, the description isn't thorough at all. It's just a hmm? okay. So like so yeah, I had to rework that. Glance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in in scribe and the doctor, there were certainly moments like this. Of course, the easiest part to work with was the language fudge because uh, <laughs> because neither of the guys who were speaking they they were speaking a common language that was. Uh, a little bit foreign to them both, so I uh, I was able to work with the broken grammar, which was uh, uh, equally fun in a student in English. <laughs> nice. But now that's a yeah. Uh, we're talking about the moment between scribe and sixteen here, right? Yeah, yeah. The language bit. I've always thought that's been one of the sort of standout moments in that story is how they they eventually communicate with mm. one another and and how they communicate with each other, like how. It's a sort of, it's a bit, you know, clunky here and there. Mm -hmm. I, I really like that, so, yeah. Uh, and now we get the juicier part, so, uh, to Ooh. the feedback part. Uh, basically, I, I did get uh, some uh, individual feedback uh, from some of the judges, because those are the guys uh, who are also in the writing workshop. Uh, and I think there are certain things that we can... Uh, we can pick up and apply for other stories as well. Uh, so, one of the major point from one of the judges was that, that he, he had he had taken the sort of uh, on the go notes or like uh, take uh, blogging while he or re uh, noting down points as he was reading the different stories, and he had written upon reading this. Uh, this doesn't uh, this. The story doesn't seem to function as a standalone, or like it's it's like there was something missing, mm. and I said, ah, oh, good catch, because it really it really isn't, and it immediately reminded me uh, on the point about the salvage mission. So again, we we have we have a thing happening. 
Some, some the one with Gnarly. No, right? yeah. 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 So, uh, Gnarly and Synax. So it's like we, mm -hmm. we have a setting. Uh, we have the character retrieving something in the setting. Uh, the situation is solved. But it doesn't. It's it's like yeah, but why? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so so I, I think I think uh, this is something to look out for, and and on a bigger scale, I think this is also something to look out for in those innocent, independent adventure stories. So it's like uh, we yeah. kind of have to start bringing the whole space time wedgie into the stories more. Mm -hmm. Because we already know that we can uh, we can generate uh, the generic adventure stories uh, wherever when we want, mm -hmm. but uh, but we have to start bringing in the unique parts or well the identifying parts of this universe in more and more. Yeah. And and that was the part that I already well upon submitting I, I knew that this part is missing from scribe and the doctor because it is literally outside this story. <laughs> but but uh, but that's that's where I, I drew the line. I was like, yeah, I could try to wedge it in right now, but I think it's better if we if we look at this together. So this is I think uh once we get to the collision course uh Bits and and bobs, uh, then this is uh, this is something to look out for, uh, and uh, uh, sort of tangentially, I would also say that uh, this uh, makes me think of salvage mission and scribe and the doctor even more as bits that belong together with the uh, yeah. uh, with the collision course, not uh, not not so much as individual short stories. Because if this was a chapter in in a longer book and the sort of real info was coming was still coming up, then 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 I think it's okay. But yeah, the uh, <laughs> uh, the one of the judges, the, the the same who had written like the story doesn't seem to function as a as a standalone. I was like, uh, when we were discussing this later, I was like, oh, it's part of that universe. Oh, I wish I had knew, <laughs> I had known that. And I was like, nah, mm. even it's good that you didn't because uh, the one, uh, if if the story were to be, uh, were to appear anywhere on its own, then it has to stand on its own. And if it doesn't, then we yeah. have to, you know, we we have to add uh, add some duct tape here and and uh, <laughs> uh, tape tape a wedgie on it to make sure that it does work on its own <laughs> I don't think it like if he'd had the context of the larger Chaos Nova universe I don't think that would have been fair like that's yeah yeah exactly that's stuff that's not in the story yeah, uh, yeah. Is additional material that we didn't or you didn't submit to the competition so yeah it's <laughs> like oh by the way here's our world bible <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> enjoy yeah. So 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 yeah. It's like uh, on on one hand, of course, I would have what I would have liked to get a a higher position. But on the other hand, there are like things that can objectively be pointed out as something that can be done better. And and also the fact that I didn't spend a ton of time with it. Whereas I, I think maybe some other people were really polishing their stories and really really work mm. with them. So. Uh, I think it's a it's a fair and just uh, result that we shall accept and yeah. and, and and take the uh, take the suggestions with it. Uh, what was what was the suggestion from the other judge? Personally, yeah. Uh, if you consider it that we managed to get into the twenty three to twenty nine bracket out of a total of seventy nine people, I think you've done a phenomenal job for the first time we've submitted a story to a competition. So I'm well happy, personally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the uh, the other judge uh, who offered uh, individual advice, I think he, his point was it is it is clearly an okay written thing, like competently written thing. Which is kind mm -hmm. of I, I think this is like the uh, minimum bar for us because well I'm a fucking copywriter 
<laughs> I, if if I can't uh, if I can't produce uh, uh, competent text, then then there's something wrong. So so at least at least we've, we've cleared the lowest bar. Uh, <laughs> right. but, so, so it's like uh, it's it's competently written. Uh, the story's okay, uh, but uh, he felt like something was missing. And mm. he didn't specify what exactly. I, I guess it's it's one of those. Uh, you feel that uh, you feel that the story is going somewhere, but then it sort of stops or or it doesn't. Uh, so I, I think uh, probably bringing in the uh, the bigger universe out there is is probably the solution for for both of the suggestions. I think this is the same feedback we got on Salvage Mission though yep, as well, isn't yep, it? Yep, From exactly. People, was it it missed that sort of kick yeah, at the yeah. end or that hard hit at the end yeah ba basically uh, his uh, his feedback was sort of like the pie is solid but he would like some cherries on top <laughs> 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 so, so yeah it's like the, yeah, the, the like the chunk of it is there but we now have to uh, have to bring in those special ingredients and special parts mm -hmm. which I, I think it's a sort of overall a a good thing to keep in mind well i think this is good because if if as you said the bar's set pretty low we can we can okay so we've got that sort of on lockdown yes we mm -hmm. can keep improving but now so we've got the technical aspect of writing stories down mm -hmm. and as you said the adventures the mini adventures sort of mm -hmm. stories everywhere mm -hmm. um we now need to develop on that mm -hmm. and, and add those kicks in, yeah. those those yeah. cherries on top, as he so succinctly put it. Yeah, cherries or alien eggs or what have you. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me tilt my camera up a little bit for for a bit. Th those are mm -hmm. uh, big Mike's posters. Yeah, man. Uh, oh. While I'm moving it, uh, let me also gloat here. So I have alien here. Yeah. Here. Alien egg up there. Zombies mm -hmm. there. I also have one of the uh, big mics. Cosmic horror creature facing me from from behind the screen. But I'm, mm -hmm. I, I think I can't push the camera enough to show that. Mm. They're <laughs> awesome. Yes. In tangent, where were we? <laughs> <laughs> Thoughts? As a co-author, what did you feel? What did you think? I was really happy <laughs> to just sort of like step back on this because there's no way I could have helped in any mm. regard, right? Yeah. At the point Not where right you where you start submitting it to like, or when you start working on it for an Estonian uh, adaptation, there's there's literally nothing I can do. I might pop up occasionally and be like, who has to Svarhend? And that would be my <laughs> contribution to everything, right? So, I was really happy, though, to sort of just step away from Scribe and the Doctor and just let you mm -hmm. do your thing. I mean, if there were any issues, I'm sure you would have mm -hmm. got in touch. And if there were any issues, I can't remember any, so uh, it yeah. must have been a smooth process, right? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think yeah. Uh, I think plot-wise, the the end bits where the AI, well, not the AI, but uh, the 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 doctor wakes up. Uh, mm -hmm. So I th I think we sort of we had the general idea what happens there, but uh, not maybe not all the beats. So I I did wing those or I did come up with some of those on the go. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, the end result was still the same, like uh, the specimen stays, the doctor goes, uh, the doctor questions his assignment. <laughs> Side note, for Ooh. for the collision course we, we have to figure out who gave him this the assignment. I, th I think we don't know that yet. No. <gasps> and, mm. and I have some thoughts, mm -hmm. but it's one of those things where we have to discuss them. Yes. And it sounds like you've got some thoughts as well, actually. Uh, like actually, I don't. But, oh, this, okay. but this is something that holds very much potential. And, mm. uh, and maybe Alien X. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is, uh, this is actually knowing who gave him the assignment uh, 
would be one of those possible improvement points, even if uh, that discussion itself is outside the the frames of this story. Mm. Uh, then the parallel story, uh, who attacked uh, the base or who who sent the uh, uh, EMP or 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 mini nuke or whatever, who who sent the pulse down to the thing. Uh, I think we did. We have news for that as well. I wrote a short story, um, but it wasn't very good. Like the team didn't know why they were there. Mm -hmm. They. They thought it was like a training run or or, or a simulation or they'd been shit canned or something mm -hmm. um, and it didn't really play out that well but there are some notes existing for that there must be because I think I got inspired to write some shit after we had that discussion mm. so there must be some notes somewhere I think we, we need to dig those up mm -hmm. uh, and see what we can incorporate in uh, in collision Although, some, uh, although, although, if those hints uh, can be small enough, may maybe some of those hints can be compacted into something that we can include in the scribe and the doctor itself. So this mm. means we don't have to write out the other mission in its entirety, but we yeah. can have like echoes of it. <laughs> I think the crew, it's so funny that you say that because I think the crew name that I chose to to drop the EMP was Faint Echo. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't need to be a fully fledged story. I don't think it's strong enough to stand on its own mm -hmm. anyway as a fully fledged story, so <gasps> yeah, including it as parts. Mm -hmm. Here's an idea. Uh, so after, uh, after the scribe has been pushed out of the facility, uh, he it could be that he doesn't uh, leave right away but he will uh, will be able to collect some evidence on the uh, mm. on the attack itself so it's like basically when once he once he leaves he will leave with a little bit greater info package or or uh, if it's a next uh, if it's a next chapter next story uh, he could return uh, with Nolly to the site and try to uh, try to glean some info at which point uh, the doc since the doctor is now operational again uh, he would be working against them so many possibilities interesting <laughs> I love this, the sort of free flow approach that we could take to this. Mm -hmm. right. There are some pieces in place. So yeah, yeah place. I, I would say that there are some, mm -hmm. um, uh, some buds or seeds of the bigger story uh, in Scribe and the Doctor that uh, we might be able to sprout a little bit further. Mm -hmm. And but we don't know how they're going to grow. We don't We've got know. some ideas. <laughs> but they're all growing crazy, which is great could go in any direction. Let me uh, wrap up this episode that was dedicated to last Saturday when the short story contest uh, the winners were announced. Congratulations to oh, everybody. Yeah, yep. can, yeah, that's the thing. Congratulations to everybody who took part and everybody who, you know, uh, <laughs> took part, I guess. <laughs> and uh, double congratulations to everybody who ranked and uh, shout yeah. outs to our fellow 23 to 29 club How's yeah 23 to 29 club <laughs> yeah man nice work so uh, yeah we did it first competition definitely not our it last. is it is the first mm -hmm. and uh, it's like if you think of it like uh, uh, like a motor show so it's like we got these uh, all all those little uh, junk ships put together so ours ours was uh, standing ours uh, was uh, dust uh, ours was standing in a dusty hangar uh, where it had yeah. been abandoned uh, a year ago and then I taped some wings on it and it <laughs> flew a little bit <laughs> not to the orbit but a little bit <laughs> I, love, I love that analogy <laughs> so uh, let us let us marvel all those who uh, who made it further, 
and and let us send a fist bump uh, to those who made it as far as we did and then mm -hmm. uh, we start uh, p uh, gathering parts for uh, for the next potential flights <laughs> yeah. and also a huge thanks to the judges who read through all of that <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah 79 stories could not have been an easy thing mm -hmm. to work through uh, so yeah cheers guys so, I think let's uh, let's say bye bye here and carry on with our own topics we, we will be we will be in the hangar <laughs> <laughs> bye thanks for watching bye